Hello, hello, friends. It's Dion at the Blushing Mint. Welcome back. Thank you, thank you for coming back and joining me on this Christmas in July series. I appreciate having your company. Thank you so much to my longtime subscribers. I appreciate you more than you know, and welcome, welcome to all of the new viewers and subscribers that we have. Um, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for subscribing, and I hope that you find some things here that inspire you, and along the way, maybe you'll share um, and give me some thumbs up when you do like the things that you see. Comment as well and let me know what you're thinking. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I read every comment and um, I try to get back to you as quickly as possible. So today I am just doing what really is a quick pocket tuck. Um, and this is made from your junk mail envelopes. This is just all junk mail envelopes. We all get them. We all have them. Um, and what I have done here, guys, is I have taken my junk mail envelopes and I have fed them through my Big Shot machine, my Big Shot embossing machine. Um, and what I did is I took my embossing folder and I just ran my ink pad directly over the embossing folder. So just like you would stamp on a stamp, on a um, rubber stamp, I actually just took my, my stamps and I just ran them right over the top of the embossing folder. I sprayed it one time with water, just a quick puff of water over the top of it, laid my envelopes in there, ran them through the embossing machine, and this is the result. Um, they are fabulous. I just, I absolutely love them. For the purpose of saving time and whatnot, I'm not going to show you how to emboss. Um, there's a hundred videos, a hundred million probably videos on how to use a big shot and an embossing folder um, to emboss. And then all I did is just add the color to them. This is brushed corduroy, Tim Holtz Distress Brush Cordery brushed corduroy. This is potting soil. Um, this is walnut stain. This is uh, moss. And that is a, um, this is an oxide. Um, these are all um, fired brick. This is pine needle. These are sage and this is another one of the moss. So those are the different colors that I used here. Just a nice random Christmassy um, selection here. And then this is so easy. So this is a pocket and when you place it into your journal Depending upon how you put it in here, I would glue the side and the bottom and you have a tuck spot on whatever side you choose. Or you could glue it straight on and have another pocket behind and then your pocket here. But these are awesome, super easy, and a great way to get rid of all that junk mail envelope stuff that comes in your mailbox. So let me show you how quick and easy it is to do these. So after I embossed these, um, so they have this great, fabulous texture on here, um, this embossed texture. You can probably really see that on the back. Um, and the color, all you do is you cut your envelope down to size. Now, um, I do want to show you a couple mistakes that I made here because, you know, this is real crafting and I make real mistakes and all that jazz here. Okay, so like the embossing folder is not as long as your envelope. Your embossing folder is usually only about six or seven inches high. And um, I fed this one through my embossing folder the wrong direction. I needed to feed it through um, so that my window was fully covered. But... I can still turn this in. I can decorate this and make it a pocket or something else there. No big deal. I will still use this. Also, um, on this one, 
and like say on this one where there is the lines and the postmark and whatnot on there go ahead and find a neutral washi tape that you may have or lay a piece of um coffee dyed paper or even white paper whatever you want to just cover that up um and that way it will it doesn't it doesn't show through your design um you can cover you can cover it up with paper with your collage whatever it's not i mean it doesn't make or break this project but it's just it's food for thought and i'm just showing you um, a couple of my mistakes just so that you you know if you're if you're going to try this project you don't necessarily make the same mistakes i made and so make sure that you're feeding um first of all with your windows to where they are fully covered in the embossed folder and then um, use your washi tape and whatnot and cover over things if you so desire. So, um, anywho, that is, that is my food for thought. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to create these. cute little pockets. They are super, super easy. It's just a matter of cuts and you're done. All right. So now for my particular project, I needed to make sure that my envelope, because see some envelopes may or may not be too wide for your project. So I needed to make sure that one, my envelope was a narrow enough envelope for this book. But if I was to grab A different journal um, most envelopes will fit but you need to make sure that um, you know how tall they need to be because we do need to cut these down to fit so let's just take this one let's just pretend that we're making this next one for this cute little journal here so I know that my journal is about eight and a half so I'm going to just go ahead, first of all, and I am going to cut this off right where that embossing folder ended in some semblance of a straight line. Now, all I need to do here, um, you can glue down your flaps where, um, if, you, if you so desire, you can glue them down. Actually, I am going to lift mine for the time being because... It's way easier. <laughs> it's way easier to line your paper if this is open. Just you know, just another food for thought for you. I'm trying to make it easy as possible. Next, I need to just cut a tag shape. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna fold my two sides together here. You don't have to make them perfectly straight or anything. It's just, you know, this is what's easy for me. And cut a little tag shape there. Like so. Now, all you do is you fold the front down straight across. And now you have your tag base. That's it. So this, you can um, cover, we can do several different things. Make sure it's straight across. Um, you know, that's always helpful too. So the first thing we want to do is we want to cover the inside of our window. It's fine if it's white. Not all of them are white. Um, like some of mine here have... Um, darker colors, etc. in them. I always think it's nice to just have something pretty to look at on the inside, even though we're going to have tags in there. But, you know, I just say, let's cover it. Now, this is a good time when you can grab your bag, your bag of scraps, 
grab your bag of scraps here. And let's go ahead and, oh no, I want a taller scrap because I want it to come out. Sorry, see, on the fly, on the fly, I'm doing this. You want it to come out and cover the top here. So we do need a taller scrap. Still not tall enough. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to play in my bag of straps. I'm just going to grab a paper pad and I am going to find a piece of paper to use. Okay, this is a piece of paper that I have screwed up a hundred ways from Sunday. I've, it's scored 900 different times and so we're just going to use it because it's, that's perfect for this kind of a project. So you just cut it to fit that inside. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to cover it. And like I said, it's way easier <laughs> if your envelope is open to do this. Just sand. I just want, I'm just checking to see which way I may be avoiding the most, there we go, folds. Okay, now because our envelope is open, we can glue this most all of the way down. But if your envelope is not open, don't stress on trying to get glue all the way down. Just get a few inches of your envelope glued. That is, that is enough. And then we can go ahead and glue our pocket back shut, but don't add too much glue because you do not want to glue the pocket shut. Okay. All right. And then we just trim around here. like so. All right, there we have it. Now then, we literally just decorate. So you can decorate this however your little heart's desire. Um, I am looking for a paper pad that that piece of paper came from. And I don't have it, but this will be just fine. I'm just grabbing some paper, just grabbing some paper here. And um, you just, you just decorate. You can also get your, um, like, look at, yeah, this is better. Look at your ephemera packs. Um, I just saw the Santa Claus is coming to town here on the front. Look how cute that is. I love that. And then I want to cover my little flap there, but I don't, here we go. I'm going to use this paper right here to do that. Um, so I just need a strip. Okay. 
like so. And then I'm going to ink it up because inking is necessary in my book. Just the top. I'm going to glue it down here. And this also helps to strengthen those flaps as well. So I glue that in place and then I flip it over and I just have to cut along the edges of my flap and along the bottom and then I can come back in and ink those edges and glue the whole thing down because we don't need that flap at all. That is just creating our pocket. like that. And then while I got my little ink out here, I'm just going to go ahead and ink all these edges up here. And you don't have to ink. I just like the look of it. Then I dropped my Santa Claus is coming to town here. Got to find it. Okay, I think it's cute. So yeah, these are super easy. These are a great um, addition to your journals. And also a fun little way to give your Christmas letter too as another, just another example of a way to present your family Christmas letter. Do people even do family Christmas letters anymore? Comment below if you ever get a Christmas letter anymore for, for Christmas. I have one friend who does Christmas letters. She doesn't even have a family. But as long as I have known her, I have gotten a Christmas letter from her. And I love it. It's something I look forward to every year because she is a great writer. And her stories in her letter are awesome. So, Riley Jo, I always look forward to your, um, to your Christmas letters. Okay, so there is that. Then all you need to do is you just need to create a tag to go inside of your inside of your pocket. I was just looking. This paper just does not match, and it bothers me to even want to try to use it. I could maybe use this one. I might be able to get away with this one and not feel horrible about it. I didn't grab a paper that matched. So how wide would my tag be here? Just so if we went with like three and a half. Three and a half. And about here. And I've lost my little tag maker. I don't know what I did with it. My desk is actually 
cleaned off, so I have no idea what I did with it. We'll just create our own here. I made it just a bit tall. Just a bit tall. That's okay. We can cut it off. No big deal. Round the corners across the bottom. Ink it up. Like that. Get out our paper punch. And there we have another one. So, in my mess, I've lost my first one. Imagine that, would you? There it just stays. I literally can't find it. Guys, can you see it? Do you see it on my desk? Can you tell me that it's here? No. What did I do with it? I don't know. Nobody knows, friends. Did I leave it in the journal? Did I do that? Not in that one. Did I leave it in this one? Yes. Yes, I did. Right there. Just like that. Just you know, because that's, <laughs> oh, friends, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself or you'll cry, um, yep, totally, that's me. Um, if I don't laugh at myself, I will cry at sometimes my own, my own madness. Okay, so um, in the interest of because that was like a hot mess, let's just make another one just because. So. Let me set a couple of these things aside and let's just do another one real quick here because that was probably fairly confusing. All right, so I ran these through my embosser, okay? I had sprayed my embossing plate with my dye ink and then I sprayed it one time with a spray bottle of water, and then I ran it through the embossing folder. Okay, this is what you end up with. Now, we just cut off the top of that and get rid of that. This gives us an envelope that is seven and a quarter inches tall for right now. The next thing we do is we cut it into a tag shape. Like this. Okay. Then you fold down the front flap. And fold that across like so. Now we need to cover the inside back of our envelope. And I am going to go ahead and use this paper pad because it goes with my journal. And I just like it. So, and it is tall enough. That's important. That is a key important piece of business. Okay. Marking my spot there of where I need to cut it. Okay, 
then I can decide, do I want, ooh, the wreath poking through there? Or do I want stars? I do like the stars, as beautiful as the wreath is. I do like the stars, so I'm going to do the stars. All right, so all we do is we lay this in here. Okay, and guess what? I cut it too long. Please don't do what I do. Do as I don't do as I do. <coughs> See if that was enough. There we go. Okay, now just attach your glue. <laughs> and then you can glue your envelope back together here. all adhered well. Then you just cut along your tag shape line. Like that. Then you can cover this flap here with another scrap of paper. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use this star here. And you glue this had to decide which side I wanted to I wanted a good straight edge on that top. Then you lift it up and you just cut along your tag shape again. And like that and then you glue this down actually I'm going to ink before I glue and then glue this all down here And we have our pocket. Then all we need to do is just, again, decorate. And I would want to cover this edge here. So there is 
This is a cut apart piece on the opposite side. So I'm going to cut this. And my little round my little corners here. Whoops, helps if I actually put it in the corner rounder. Ink it up. And glue it down, friends. So yeah, these are cute, cute little pockets. just like that and then all you need to do is just create a tag to go in there now one of the other things i was going to show with these is that you can also make these a um oh geez guys i'm tired and my little brain just is not thinking oh a, a hinge you could hinge these and they could be a flip out and in, if you did that um if you did that you would cover the back of your envelope with another piece of paper so you'd want that to be a finished edge and then you could create just a little hinge by folding like a half inch or yeah, like a half inch piece of paper in half and you create a little hinge and then you glue down the one side to the paper, one side to the envelope and then it would flip up and then you could have hidden journaling space here. You'd have your tag here. Um, so you could also hinge these in a journal, and I actually think I'm going to end up doing that with this one on this particular page here. Um, I just I just think it's cool, and I like how um, that paper all match is, so I think I'm going to end up doing a hinge right here on this. So you could glue them down. You could do it, glue it all the way down and just have the one pocket. You could glue them on, a corners, on the corners and have a tuck. Or you could actually finish the back and hinge them and have a hinge pocket. So, or they could be, they could even be standalone in a pocket. Um, you can also use them to mail your Christmas letters. You could use them to give a gift. Um, they're just, they're super cute. They're easy. And we've used minimal supplies and all of our junk mail envelopes. So friends, I hope that um, that has not been too confusing of a project to follow along with and that you will grab your um, junk mail envelopes and guys even if you don't have an embossing folder grab a stencil stencil the front of them they don't have to be embossed by any stretch of the imagination you could just collage them um, the idea is just how to make the pocket itself and then how you decorate it and what you do with it is just up to you but this is a fun fun little pot pocket to add to um, your journals and beyond. So friends, thank you for joining me. Um, thank you for just constantly being here and encouraging me. Um, and until the next video, I hope you guys stay well, that you um, that you stay well, be safe, you find time to craft, and that you do join me in the next video. I so appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Take care. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye, friends.